Hello, I'm Captain Chris Lee, Communications Chairman for the FedEx Master Executive Council. With me today is Captain Pat May, Negotiating Committee Chairman, Captain Ken Bender, R&I Committee Chairman, and First Officer Jim Plover, Negotiating Committee Member. Thanks for coming, guys. Pat, last video you did, you talked about the five phases of retirement. Where are we at in that process? Yeah, we laid out five specific phases for the MEC. Um, we're pretty much complete with those initial five phases, with the exception of the pilot education and the surveying that'll, that'll occur. And that's going to occur continuously throughout this project. Uh, Jim can give some more information about the specific survey information that we found, um, which can be located on fdx.alpa.org. Yeah, we have that hot topic up now, and uh, that gives us uh, all the membership can look at those survey results and see exactly what uh, answers were given and, and how the data was collected. But overall, we did a we, we really got a great sample, uh, a 50 percent participation rate and cross section of domiciles and seniority numbers and blocks. Um, and I think as a general takeaway, we have uh, a much better understanding of our pilots' level of education as it comes to you know retirement and pension planning and so forth. And we think all of our pilots, based on that, the results uh, are uh, fairly well educated uh, as to what we have now, what their expectations are in the future, are very realistic. And I, I think it was a, it was a great effort. And we, we there were a few surprises in there to be honest with you, uh, but uh, most of them were were pleasant surprises in terms of education. But we still, have, we still have some work to do. Now that those phases are complete, where are we with the R&D effort? After the uh, MEC internal review last year, um, it was decided to move forward with some consulting uh, options that we had on the table. Two of those options were David Blitzstein, who specializes in, in the uh, union uh, research and development field of uh, insurance and retirement plans. Uh, the other uh, companies that we interviewed to assist in our, our effort was the Milliman Corporation and Chiron. Ultimately, we decided to go with Chiron. Um, in addition to that, we had an internal strategic meeting. We brought in the SMEs, Ken's team, uh, the negotiating team, ALPA, National Assets, and our consultants to discuss and deliberate on specific overarching goals uh, that would uh, act as a guidepost for us throughout this project. Okay, let's step back to uh, David Blitzstein. Jim, can you give us a little history of what he's done in the past? Sure. D uh, David's got more than 30 years' experience in the you know retirement insurance uh, industry. He was uh, appointed uh, to the advisory uh, committee uh, with the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. We all know that as the PBGC. Uh, he's worked as a pension trustee for some very large uh, pension systems and worked directly with uh, commercial uh, food workers and the uh, United Mine Workers uh, in negotiating retirement and pension plan changes. So he's, you know, terrifically qualified to assist us here, sort of uh, head off this, uh, this path that we have to find ourselves. He really answers a lot of questions uh, as they come up for us. He's uh, invaluable. Ken, Pat mentioned Chiron. What's their role in this process? They were brought in to do the heavy lifting on the math and to create usable math that we can take advantage of. Primarily, they do that by uh, developing models of various alternative plan designs in retirement. That allows us to evaluate and stress test those designs. They've also been there to consult and assist us as we've developed those plans and also help us with the cost side of things from uh, accounting and cash costs of the various plan designs. Okay, what other SMEs are involved in this process? Throughout the entire process, uh, we've had the entirety of the national staff. Uh, that consists of benefit specialists. We have ERISA attorneys up there who specialize in benefits law. We have actuaries uh, and, and myriad other folks that have had many, many years in the benefit space, both in airlines and throughout the uh, different industries in the United States. You mentioned overriding goals in this project. What are the goals? Well, Chris, th through our internal strategic planning meeting that we had that I mentioned earlier, um, we had our SMEs there, Ken's team, we had ALPA national staff and our consultants. Um, we crafted five goals that are going to be overarching guideposts as we progress through this. Uh, those goals are to design a sustainable retirement plan that generates adequate replacement income for FedEx pilots across generations. 
Second, it needs to adopt a durable retirement plan that's financially sustainable and affordable under all economic conditions. We have to establish a retirement plan that will simplify future bargaining, and that's important and key for us, understanding the history of our bargaining with retirement. We have to include provisions which will ensure ALPA's role is commensurate with the risk and value associated with the retirement plan. And lastly, we have to adopt best practice governance and administrative structures which will embrace the stated goals and principles. Could this project and this research and development that you're doing, could it lend itself to future negotiations? Yeah, Chris, ultimately uh, this is the objective of the work that's been underway and our goal is to provide the pilots with a durable retirement plan that's, that meets the unique needs of the FedEx pilots. But prior to any negotiation at all, we'll need to have a viable plan alternative to put in front of the MEC so the leadership of the MEC can decide whether or not we can take that to FedEx Corporation. That meeting is important with FedEx. It has to be with their top level executives, with their CFOs. They have to understand that this plan design is something that would both influence the future of FedEx and permanently improve the FedEx pilots. We think that's an important aspect but we also realized that FedEx is going to have to spend significant time and deliberation reviewing the plan. So we would expect an initial meeting with the company after approval from the MEC to take the plan design, go back to the drawing board with it, seek out whatever assistance they need, evaluate the plan, and we expect them to take anywhere from four to six months in doing that before we hear a single word back from them whether or not there's any interest at all. Once they get back to us, then we'll, we'll know where to go from that point on. As far as the FedEx pilots, it's critical during that time where we have a break that we continue to educate the pilots on what specific plan design we brought forward to, to FedEx. Ken has more information about how we can go about doing that education. We would use avenues that are familiar to the pilots that have been used in the past. The enhanced website where there will be questions and answers, uh, issues uh, that are hot topics will be there that pilots can read through the explanations of. Uh, additionally, there will be more of these videos that will educate the pilot group, uh, hub turn meetings, those kind of things. Everything I hear here is this is a slow and methodical process. Do you guys agree with that, Jim? Yeah, well, I th we have to be extremely careful with this process, and we understand that. Um, we know the results from the last round of negotiation, and we know that this can be a contentious issue for people. So we're being completely transparent and open. Um, we're utilizing the best tools that we can possibly muster, and we're going to do as good a job as we possibly can, present the information in a way that's usable for pilots to make a good decision and uh, move forward from there. Any final thoughts? I think for the pilots, they need to be rest assured that we're not going to move into a negotiation with FedEx without them being fully aware of it. The leadership, the MEC, has to authorize us to do that. That certainly will be out in front and out in the open. We have arguably one of the best retirements in the industry. We're just simply trying to improve upon that retirement. Whether we do it now outside of Section 6 negotiation or in 2021 inside Section 6 negotiation, the only goal is to improve what we have, and that's it. Okay, thanks guys for coming. And thank you for watching. For more information, go to our website, fdx.alpa.org. We'll see you next time.